Hi everyone, it's Miss Naima again. So welcome back to another video for your class key text from the chapter book of The Secret Diary of Jane Finney. Let's get reading. So we are on page 62 and it's day 26 in Jane's diary. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. There I was talking about Zack and now he's taking a terrible tumble. At least it didn't happen upstairs in front of the master and mistress, but that's only a small consolation. He was going up the servants' stairs and back stairs in the passage of the servants' hall and the kitchen with a great big tureen full of soup and a, on a tray. When he lost his footing and fell backwards, he banged his head, hurt his leg and got covered in scalding hot soup. I didn't see him fall, but I was one of the many what heard his cries and rushed out to help. Cook seemed more worried about finding another tureen, what with this one being smashed to smithereens but she seemed to have plenty more soup to make up for that poured all over poor jack it's not that cook doesn't care she do except that her job is to get the right amount of food up there and hot mr pritchard and the footman's is to get get it up there and serve she daren't keep the master and mistress, mistress waiting it's a funny old world where soup matters more than an injured man ain't it once we managed to move Jack, his face twisted in pain, Mrs. McNamara had the stairs mopped clean as quick as a flash, so no one else might slip, and first footman, Long Doms, was back downstairs, taking up the replacement soup. It was felt there was no need for a doctor. The good ones are too expensive. So there's a number 49 there, so let's have a read what that means. Doctors were seen as gentlemen and could even dine upstairs with the family in an upper-class home. Often their fee was wrapped up and left on a table nearby rather than handed to them directly, because taking payment was not seen as a gentlemanly thing to do. Many doctors did offer free surgeries for the poor once a week, but did not do free house calls. There were other types of cheaper doctors, but they were not qualified and often offered quack, or other, um, in other words, also unproven remedies. Um, says Mrs. McNamara, and the chief wants no little or less than we do. It was clear that Jack had broke his leg, so Kent, the stable master, was called for. As well as caring for the master's horses when they're injured, it turns out Kent has also looked after those who have fallen from horses or even been kicked by one. Tench appeared and the first thing he did was order, order that the poor lad be given a nip of brandy from Mr. Pritchard's supply, but, but Jack got down a lot more than a nip, I can tell you. Tench then went about setting the bone back in the correct position, tying it to a piece of wood which he called a splint, and then wrapping bandages provided by Mrs. McNamara around it to hold it all tight. Miss Annie, the lady's maid, Meanwhile, was saying soothing things to Jack while she bathed his head wound with a cotton rag into a bowl of water. My job, groans Jack. What of my job? I reckons we were all wondering that. If you can't work, you don't get paid. There's a number 50 there, so let's see what that means. There were no workers' rights, a servant could be dismissed for no reason, and there was every reason to replace a footman with a broken leg. You might even end up in the poor house. What does a poor house mean? The poor house or workhouse was where the destitute would be housed, often in overcrowded and appalling conditions, and fed often meagre and inad inadequate meals. In return for often back-breaking work, seen as charity, it was a hard life for those put in them. There was, there was no supper to prepare for the master and mistress today, because they are dining out this evening. Mr. Pritchard did have to go into the wrong, strong, strong room of the kitchen, though. This is place where the most valuable items in the house, which ain't out on display, are kept, including the best silverware. So let's see what that means. Some houses locked the silverware and valuable china in the butler's pantry. Others had, had walk-in safes like this one, you can see in the picture. 
It's like a giant safe where you can walk into like a big cupboard or a small room with a thick metal door and a key what Mr. Fisher keeps about his person at all times. Okay, one more silver salver. What's a silver salver? So a silver salver is a tray. So a silver tray. Or knife and fork I saw him take out. It was a flat square box and he handed it to Miss Honey, Mrs. Kirby Trot's lady, lady's maid. Thank you, Mr. Pritchard, she says, and hurried off upstairs with it. In the background, I could hear cook fuming that someone had put a lead solder in the bread dough. Someone had put a lead solder toy, uh, dough, um, solder in the dough. So let's see what that means. Lead soldiers, about two inches high and painted with brightly coloured uniforms, were expensive toys for the well-to-do. Lead is a poisonous, so in the 20th century, lead toys were eventually outdrawn. I tried not to giggle. Honest, I did. I mean, lead is poisonous and all. The back stairs are dry now, and you'd never have known that poor Jack had taken such a tumble if you hadn't seen it or heard it for yourself. Okay, that was all our reading done for today. So get a pencil and paper ready to jot down your questions for the passage we've just read. So number one is, what made Jack, a tall footman, drop down the stairs? You will find your answer to that question on page 62. And question number two is, who treated Jack's injury? And you will find that answer on page 64. So please pause the video and rewind the video if you need to, to go back to the pages to find your answer to the questions. Okay, good luck to answering your questions and please make sure you put it on tap so I can have a read. Thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.